So how critical is it for Iran and these nuclear talks to continue? And what do we make of the continued deferring views between Iran's president and its supreme leader? We're joined now by Larry Korb, senior advisor to the Center for Defense Information. Uh, Mr. Korb, I'd like to start with President Obama. He made some comments about Iran today in his speech at West Point Academy. So let's listen to that first. Okay. We reserve all options to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. But for the first time in a decade, we have a very real chance of achieving a breakthrough agreement, one that is more effective and durable than what we could have achieved through the use of force. So what do you think about what he had to say? He, he <clears throat> wants to remind the world the military option will always be on the table. Well, when you negotiate, you obviously never <clears throat> take anything off the table. But I think the thrust of his speech is people say, I'm not making any progress without going to war. Look, we're negotiating with Iran. They have already slowed down their, their nuclear weapons uh, uh, program. So we're moving in the right direction. But what, <clears throat> what is the status of these negotiations that are supposed to restart again in June? Well, the status basically is that the Iranians have allowed much more intrusive inspections, particularly at the, the, the reactor at Iraq. Uh, they have also slowed down the creation of, uh, you know, centrifuges and spinning. And in return for that, there's been some relaxation of the uh, sanctions. What is the biggest stumbling block between Iran and the six world powers? I think the real stumbling block is going to be a very technical thing. Iran says they will never give up the right to enrich, enrich uranium. uranium, which, of course, under the non-proliferation treaty, you're allowed to. The real question is how close are they or how much are they going to enrich it so they're close to a breakout capacity? And it has to do, you know, whether it's up to 20 percent or stays down to 5 percent and how many centrifuges you're allowed. Can these negotiations move forward, be productive, move in a positive direction when Iran's supreme leader makes fiery anti-American speeches and then you have the president, Rouhani, who seems to be conciliatory. So who's really calling the shots here? Well, the uh, supreme leader, if he didn't want negotiations, would never have allowed Rouhani a, to get elected, and B, to start them. But what he's trying to say is we're not going to be bullied by the West. We're going to get a good deal for Iran. To a certain extent, he's playing to his domestic audience. Mm -hmm. The real negotiations are taking place uh, between the P5 plus one and, uh, and Iran. So last year, we had this amazing breakthrough between the United States and Iran. There were secret negotiations going on. So do you foresee back-channel discussions between U.S. and Iran again to finalize the deal? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that the United States, while it has the other is the dominant power, and therefore, if they can work it out behind the scenes, because remember, you're trying to get six countries to agree. So you want to make sure that you've ironed out all of the differences before you come to the formal end of the negotiations. But I got to emphasize that one of President Obama's big accomplishments is to get the other countries to put the sanctions on, including countries like Russia and China, who previously had not been willing to do that. And are you personally optimistic there will be a breakthrough by the Ju uh, July 20th deadline? Well, it's going to be a breakthrough, whether it's July 20th or August 20th. The, question, the real issue is we're moving in the right direction compared to where we were for the last, you know, five or six years. And Iran is less capable of making a nuclear weapon now than they were when these negotiations started. And that's a victory for the world. All right. Thank you so much. Larry Korp, senior advisor to the Center for Defense Information. We appreciate it, sir.